Now, if there's one thing that's certainly not missing on YouTube, that are videos about the topic of side hustle. Now, obviously those kind of videos are popular for a reason, right? And I watch them myself. I'm really generally interested about different side hustles of how people make money on the internet, right? And in this video, I wanna also add my two cents to that topic and really focus on side hustles that you can do online. Now, there are a lot of other side hustles that you can do offline, you know, walking dogs and washing cars or cutting lawns that you can do. So there are really millions of ways how you can make extra income and they have been existing for many, many years. It's not a new thing, but in my case, and I guess many of you as well, we are digital first people, right? And I really value time and location independence. I wanna earn money from anywhere in the world, anytime I want. And that's why in this video, I really wanna focus on digital side hustles. Now, obviously I have tried a couple of those myself so I can really give my own opinion. Plus I'm currently doing quite a number of those that are paying me money. Now I'm not a guru that will promise you that any of those side hustles can generate you $10,000 a week. I would love to, it would be amazing, but then it would be more like a full-time job rather than a side hustle. But I do believe any of those can actually generate you some kind of money, but at the same time, they could also not, right? Like anything in life, right? The same in investing, the same with any kind of job, career advice, you know, it depends on how much you dedicate yourself and what works with you. And why I like side hustles so much, not only does it give you extra income in addition to a full-time job, if you have one, at the same time, it also helps you to explore new things. When I started a couple of years ago, I was a full-time general manager running a luxury hotel. But at the same time, I always had the passion of starting my own YouTube channel one day, and I did it. And now that I left my full-time job, I have my YouTube and other income to pay my bills, right? So it was great that I had something to fall back upon and obviously build my new future on. So that's why I like side hustles. If I never would have tried it, you know, I would start from nowhere, right? So that way you can kind of find. I also, along the way, tried many other side hustles that I thought I might enjoy, but only to realize that I don't. So I think it's a great way to understand, you know, what you like, what you don't like, get comfortable and understand more things. And then later on, you can decide what you want to pursue more and make your main hustle, so to say. So in this video, I'm going to go through 20 of the most popular that I found online that people talk about and do and make money with and give you my honest opinion about each of them because you know some are better than others at least in my opinion and hopefully that will be useful for you and make sure to stay until the end because the last one might be a very special one. So without further ado, let's get started. So if you've been watching my videos before, you know I like my mind map. So here we have all the various 20 digital side hustles that we're gonna go through one by one. Now to start off with, let's talk about affiliate marketing. Now that's actually currently my biggest income. All the links that you see under my videos, you know, stockbrokers, some of my favorite tools, whenever any of you signs up to that, to any of those tools or softwares or buys any of the products, I get a little commission and kickback in return. Now, what I like about it, most of those links will also give you a benefit. So it's really win-win and ultimately the company benefits as well because they make more sales. So for me, it's a really nice way to monetize. It's a win for you, it's a win for me and a win for the company. So it's really something really nice for everybody involved, basically. The great thing about it, those sales come in even when I sleep during the night. I wake up in the morning, see how many sales I got or signups to a new broker, what have you. And that's really amazing, right? I don't have to actively sell or hustle to get those sales. Now, of course, one thing in order to get affiliate income is you need to have some kind of audience or platform where you distribute your information or content so that people buy and trust and sign up with you, right? Because these days everybody puts their links everywhere, but you only want to click on links and people that you like, trust and follow. So I think that's very easy money in the long term. Once you have a big audience, imagine some influencers, they have millions of followers right now. I'm still a tiny, tiny channel and already making good money from it. You can imagine if the channel grows, that money will only get larger and larger, which would be amazing, of course, and something I'm aiming to do. But right now it's still a very tiny channel, but at the same time, you do need an audience for that. That's not something that you just start overnight and tomorrow you decide to go for affiliate marketing. It's about investing and growing your own personal brand or your company brand, but ideally a personal brand that people start following and trusting, especially soon that we have AI influencers. I think having a personal brand, a real brand that people can really relate to and trust, I think it's going to get more and more valuable in the future. So yeah, I think it's a great income source, but you definitely need to work for it. It's not just something that you can build up overnight. The next one would be blogging. Now, obviously that used to be super popular a couple of years ago. You put up your own website, you share some blogs on your site, people come to it, they find you in the search engines, and then you can either have ads on there with Google ads, or you can have once again affiliate links through there and then that way you get your distribution people click on your links and you get affiliate income as well so it kind of goes hand in hand with affiliate income to be honest i think the times of blogs are a little bit over there's still some highly successful blogs out there like with anything in life right if you're at the top you're still going to make money but for the vast majority i think blogging is a little bit difficult to really get traction to get your content seen out there so i'm not a big fan of that i know some people make money with it but once again i think that it takes really long long time to build up 
a strong library of blogs to start ranking high in Google. That's not something that will happen overnight in the long term. You know, once again, all these AI copywriters coming out, they're going to be very difficult to compete with that and stay on top of search, especially since Google search will change in the future. So in my eyes, blogging probably wouldn't be my favorite side hustle to pursue going forward. Next up, of course, we got to speak about YouTube. Now, that's the channel that I pursued and went all in almost three years ago now. I really love it. I always had it in my mind. The only regret I have is that I didn't start it earlier. I wish I would have started you know, a couple of years before that, but hey, here we are. And I'm happy I did eventually because too many people, they keep on thinking about it. A lot of people want it, but they never make the first step, record the first video, but just go for it. Put yourself out there. Mobile phones these days are good enough to create video and you'll be amazed by the people you reach. I mean, sometimes I see my analytics, people from all over the world watching my content and it's so inspiring, so nice to see. I get comments really, as I said, from all parts of the world. And obviously those people are interested in my content. You know, one day as the channel grows, I want to have subscriber meetups to go to another country and then gather, you know, subscribers around, meet like-minded people. And at the same time, now I'm in the situation where I'm slowly getting approached by big companies that I always looked up to. And now they're approaching me wanting to collaborate. So that's amazing to see. In the future, I want to interview big CEOs of companies as well. So I still have so many things I want to do with this channel. And yeah, having a channel definitely builds up credibility and it opens doors. So for me, that's super interesting, super powerful. Powerful. And yes, it is definitely very, very slow. I mean, look, after almost three years, I'm still under 13,000 subscribers, but at the same time, you know, that's just the vanity metrics. Ultimately, what matters are the views and the views have consistently growing over time, which I'm really happy. And obviously that brings more ad money. And there's so many ways how you can monetize your YouTube channel. It's not just the YouTube AdSense. That's the one thing that everybody looks at. And obviously it depends on what niche you're in. You know, in my niche, in the finance, you get obviously more money for all those ads rather than if you're a gamer or a beauty influencer, where the ad money, basically the money that you get for a thousand views is much less than in finance or marketing or other niches on YouTube. So be mindful what you choose. Definitely, I always recommend go for YouTube, start building it up. Be very mindful. It's not a sprint, but a marathon, same as investing. So for me, it works. I'm putting out my digital content out there. And the great thing is I still have videos that are three years old and they're still getting money and views for me. So that's amazing. That's what I love about YouTube as to some other social media platforms where you put out a post or a story and then guess what? A couple of days down the road, it's just gone. Nobody ever cares about it. So that's what I love about YouTube. It really lives there and continues to generate money for you. Right, next up, we have online courses and memberships. That's something I really want to do in the future. I think it's a great way to monetize your following. But that once again brings me to the point that you need to have some kind of following, right? If you're just starting a website and you put a couple of Instagram posts, guess what? Nobody's going to buy your online course or your membership. You need to build up credibility. You need to have a big community, engaged community. It's not just about the number. I mean, these days you can buy followers, right? And people used to do that to inflate the numbers, to look all big on social media. But guess what? You had people with hundreds of thousands of followers in the end they couldn't sell a single course because people were not engaged right they followed for entertainment purposes but not for educational purposes so be very mindful what is your niche what is your offering what are you known for and what do you think people are willing to pay you for to learn from you now a lot of people will push it back against and say education should be free but if you have a way to package it in an attractive way that is structured, easily digestible, I think it can really offer a lot of value. Myself, I paid for a number of courses and they really gave me so much more insights. Now granted, most of the things I saw on there was nothing revolutionary, right? All of it I could have found on YouTube. I just like the way it has been communicated, has been structured and it resonated with me. Ultimately, that's what you're paying for. Information is always available, right? You can find everything online, yet people pay for it. You could say the same for a fitness coach, right? Why do I need a coach? I can see everything online, but it's different if you have somebody mentoring you, being behind you, pushing you, guiding you. And the same is true over here. You can definitely make absolute crazy money with this, but at the same time, you need to have a following, a community. So once again, it goes back to start building up your community. Either way, it doesn't hurt. I think start as early as possible because it does take time to get there. Next up, we move to eBooks. Now, eBooks has been around for quite a while and people were always pushing about this. Use ChatGPT to write it and then you start making millions. And honestly, I think it's absolute rubbish. Everybody has been doing it. And yes, while you can make a little bit of money, for me, eBooks is actually a way to get exposed to a bigger audience and a larger audience and build your following, right? If you have a great ebook, that's great. People start recognize you, they follow you and so on. But to really make crazy money with it, I don't think it's true, but it's what we call a lead magnet. By having a good ebook, people might like it and start following you. And then that way you build your audience and you can monetize it later down the road. But ebooks itself, I don't think it's gonna make you a millionaire overnight. It'll be highly unlikely, especially it's become so saturated with everybody now using AI to write their own books. So I don't think 
think is the best way, but still a popular way to start building and being seen by more people out there. Then we move to stock photography and that has been super popular for quite a while. It's basically where people go out, they take pictures, nice pictures arguably with a proper camera and so on of certain things, right? I don't know, a nice lake a city, um, a certain setup, a woman drinking wine, right? So when people, you know, make these kind of videos, what I'm doing right now, and they need some kind of images or a little video right now, there's certain websites that you go on, you look it up, woman drinking wine, and you would have a stock video that you could download. In return, you will pay a small royalty that the creator gets. And, you know, in the end, you have the video, you can use it, copyright free and the creator gets a bit of money every time that is being used. Now, that worked really well and still people are making money with this. But if you've seen recently, OpenAI came out with their new video generation software. And honestly, it's just mind boggling. We already have image generation, which is getting better and better all the time. And this new video generation looks absolutely unreal. And I think you know, a couple of years down the road, it's going to be picture perfect. And you can't really differentiate anymore between what's real and what has been AI generated. So I think long term, I wouldn't invest too many resources into that because I think that's going to go out of the door eventually. And if people still pay for it, at least the price will go down significantly. So yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of that, to be honest. Then we have online tutoring. And I think that's a great way. If you have something to teach, but you don't have a huge following, you can sign up to different websites that you can basically offer your services, right? Myself, still I have a one-on-one -on -one consultancy where people can book my time. If you want to do so, find my link in the description down below. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me, where basically I trade my time for money. You can book me, you can benefit from my insights and knowledge, and I get money in return. But you can do this for pretty much any skills, right? There's specialized websites for everything, for online doctors, online fitness coaches, whatever industry you're in, most likely there's going to be some kind of portal that you can sign up with and offer your service. So I think that's a great way. If you don't want to put yourself out there, put a huge personal brand, just put a little profile on one of those websites, start ranking for it, and people will book you, which is you know pretty cool. Another one is app developer. Now, obviously, that expects you to have a certain expertise to create apps, right? Now, these days, there are no code builders, which basically enable people without coding skills to put apps together. But I still think it's very technical, right? I tried it for a while. I played around with it. There's tools like Bubble.io and other platforms. But honestly, it's very technical. So as a side hustle, you know, I wasn't really so passionate about. I would then have to find someone, pay someone to do this for me. You can. Obviously, anything is possible. But if you just want to dabble around with it yourself, I think it's one of the more difficult things to get started. You probably want to have a team eventually, some expertise. Probably not the easiest way. And I don't think you're going to monetize it anytime soon. The next one is SEO consulting. And that's been very popular over the years. In order to rank high on Google, Google, right? Everybody wanted to rank on the first page. At the top, of course, you need to have good SEO, right? Optimize your search engine listing and ranking. So that way, some of the specialists, they would come in there, make sure your website ranks well. But once again, the Google algorithm changed so much. Now, I think the whole future of search ranking will be very much turned upside down with the emergence of bigger and better AI, where basically everything will be fed to you based on different parameters, not just the text that you have on your images or how many blog posts you wrote on your website. So I think these times are changing as well. They may not be called SEO consultants anymore, but AI ranking consultants, I don't know. But I think it's a bit more technical. Once again, you have to really keep up with the latest developments in the space. You can, of course, make money. But at the same time, you also need to be known for that, that people book you and pay you good money for. So yeah, while you can make money, that's not something I'll be going after, to be honest. Then we have the Etsy store. And you've probably seen this on YouTube, how I made 100,000, 200,000, half a million selling AI-generated images on Etsy, right? And honestly, when I see these videos, I'm just laughing because honestly, this is just a joke, really. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure some of those people actually made some sales. And, you know, some people do buy these things, but it's becoming so saturated. Everybody's been doing it and everybody's pumping out these AI generated artworks and what have you. And I think it's just people are getting tired of it. I would never buy these things. I don't know about you, but I think people are really shying away from this. And I don't think there's really a viable business. I would not spend a moment on this. While there are some people making some money, when you add up all the costs that are involved in it, I really don't think it's the most profitable way to go, nor the most time efficient. I'm certainly not a fan of it. I know people do make some money with it, but keep your expectations realistic. It's nice to see these videos, you know, promising you crazy returns. As I said at the beginning of this video, it's just not feasible nor realistic. If you want to start building up your own store on Shopify, I think this is a much better way to go. But once again, it goes back to brand building your company brand and your own personal brand. And then people can follow you. They connect with you, connect with your story. You know, here you're just competing with so many different offerings. I mean, how creative can your design be? And guess what? If it is creative and it is selling, people will immediately knock you off and you're competing on the same listing on the same website. So I just don't think it's worth your time. Then we have print on demand. Now this can be really anything. You can obviously print on demand t-shirts. You can print on demand 
pictures and paintings, many things. I tried it myself actually. I had motivational quotes, these big motivational canvases that you hang on the wall, similar like the painting behind me where I put, you know, inspiring quotes on there. And honestly, I made quite a bit of sales. But in the end, with the amount of time I dedicated to it, then all the costs that involved running the ads and so on, in the end, the margins are really quite small. While I made some sales, what I really pocketed in the end was very little. So yeah, I mean, it can definitely work, but once again, it's such a saturated market and not something I'm willing to build my brand around because I think there are much better ways with much higher profit margins than print on demand. But certainly it can work. And the good thing is with print on demand, it's very fast to set it up, right? You can just create a website once again on Shopify or some other platform, link up with a popular print on demand provider. I used to use Printful. I was very happy with them. You can print so many things, mugs, bags, blankets, towels, what have you, and then just put it on your website and start running ads. So you don't even need to have your own big following. You can just start running ads. But once again, those ads are getting quite expensive, especially if you don't really know what you're doing. So yeah, while it can work, I'm personally not going to pursue this going forward. Next up, we have dropshipping. Once again, that's something you probably came across here on YouTube. We have all these crazy dropshippers that apparently make millions and millions. And once again, probably that has been true for a while, but now it's been so saturated where everybody went into this. And I think it's just too hard to compete. The harder it gets to compete, your margins will start going down. I'm much more a fan of starting with it to understand how it all works. I did myself for a while. I was actually selling different wristbands for digital watches and that worked quite well, right? Because people wanted to differentiate themselves and so on. So I did that for a while. I made some money, but once again, it's so saturated. So I really liked it because it opened up my understanding for e-commerce and different things online, how to drive traffic to a website and what have you. But I think long-term, if you want to pursue that, and e-commerce is great. I mean, I love e-commerce, don't get me wrong. But I think there's a better way where you start eventually building up your own brand rather than just reselling stuff that you buy from China, more expensive to someone in Europe or the US. So I think there are better ways about it. But at the same time, I think it gives you a great understanding of how e-commerce and selling something online works. So I don't want to miss that experience. Would I do it again? Probably not. Then we move to freelancing, which I think is a great option for people, you know, just wanting to start off and try things and make money online while maybe they have a full-time job. So if they have time on the weekend or after work, you know, they can put their services on Fiverr or Upwork or different platforms out there and offer their services, right? Some people are very good in building websites. You know, if you're a good designer at Squarespace or Wix or other website builders, put yourself out there, have a nice profile, nice profile picture, good description. And guess what? Eventually people are going to book you. These websites have crazy traffic. And if you have a good offer, people will book you and you will start making money. And over time, if you have some experiences, some reviews on your profile, you can charge more. So I think you can really make some really good money over there. And that way you don't have to build your own personal brand. So I think in terms of starting to earn money, that's much faster than if you go the route of having your own YouTube channel or other online brand, which takes much longer. Now in the long term, I think the earning potential with those are way higher than if you are just following on the platform. But still, I think it's a fantastic side hustle idea if you have something special to offer, then we move to social media management. And that was actually something I was toying around with the idea of having my own social media agency for quite a while because I saw a lot of businesses struggling with that, especially hotels, you know, coming from a hospitality background. I saw a lot of hotels really, really doing a poor job with regards to social media. But now in hindsight, I'm actually happy I didn't because there's once again, so many people out there. Competition is crazy. The prices are going down while at the same time, looking where social media is going, there's a need for less polished things, but more in the moment where people should be there raw authentic stories even for hotels right you don't want to see all this published you know high-end content anymore so things are shifting and changing so you want to have people on the floor who are there creating organic content with the whole emergence of AI. Once again, this whole landscape is changing so much so fast that I really don't think I could scale it well to make sustainable, good money and high margins in the long term. So I'm really happy I didn't do it. I know people doing it and happy with it, but I don't think in two, three, four years, that's still going to be as profitable as it might be today. Another side hustle similar to YouTube is starting up your own podcast. Now, I love listening to podcasts. I listen to it all the time when I'm in the gym, out for a walk, driving. I love listening to podcasts and it's a great distribution platform, similar like YouTube, right? The podcast itself, probably not going to make you money. But later down the road, once you have a high listenership and people tuning into your podcast, you can have sponsors on the show. You can have affiliate links that you put in your show notes. You can get better, more famous guests on your show. So I think it's a great door opener that you can monetize down the road. 
But that's a really, really long-term play. I think if YouTube is a long-term play, I think podcast even more so because it really takes time to get traction. While I'm still toying with the idea to one day have my own podcast, I do prefer the video element. I think YouTube is more monetizable than podcast, but it's still a great way, especially for people who might be a little bit camera shy, who are not comfortable sitting in front of a camera. I think podcast is a great way. You could sit in your pajamas on the couch. If you have a nice voice that resonates with people, you know, you can record it anytime you wish. That's how the diary of the CEO actually started. A famous podcast by Stephen Bartlett really recommended by the way so yeah that's definitely a great way but surely not something you'll be monetizing very quickly the next one would be to have your own newsletter now similar to the podcast that's not something you're going to monetize right away but long term if you stick with it and more people start reading it you can have integration with different sponsors you can plug your own affiliate links right so once again it combines different things of how you can monetize it and you start building up your own database and that's so powerful that's one regret i had that i didn't start that process sooner right now i'm really actively building my newsletter email list by having freebies out there lead magnets right when i invite you to download my free dividend guide or budget tracker which you find down in the description below this is free of charge for you to use in return i get your email and then i can keep you in the loop of what's happening send you some emails in the future plug my own links and maybe in the future online courses membership and that way we have direct communication Otherwise, you're always going to depend on some platforms, right? YouTube might decide one day to restrict my channel and turn off the visibility and, you know, nothing I can do about it. The same on Instagram. This way, newsletter, emails, you have really this direct connectivity and that's really powerful. So, yeah, I really recommend you whatever you do apart from this, that's something you should start as soon as possible. And there's great tools like Substack that can start basically free of charge, right? You don't have to have some expensive email marketing platform that you pay hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. Substack is amazing. I started with that. Right now, I changed to Squarespace email, but Substack is an amazing way to get started. Another side hustle you could do is offering virtual assistant services. So once again, you could help out other creators online or other people, busy people, you know, for example, sorting their emails or help them with other admin tasks that they don't have the time for, right? A bit similar to Fiverr or Upwork, where you offer your services for mundane tasks, right? Previously, as a freelancer, you offer your specialized tasks here as a VA, you do things that they just don't want to be bothered with, but you don't have to be the expert in email sorting, right? You just have to do a good job. Some people, for example, they want to ask you to take emails that they get on one platform and then manually import them to another. Now, that's not very exciting, but it can definitely pay the bills, right? Have a look. If that's something where you don't see you have a specialty right now, but you still want to make money, I think that could be a great option for you to explore as well. Another way that people like to talk about making money online is filling out online surveys. Now, <laughs> Once again, for me, that's a little scammy, right? Yes, I did do that myself just to try it. And yeah, you can make a couple of euros here and there, but oftentimes I ended up coming to some really dodgy websites where they asked me to put my personal details. Some of them filled me while I was completing a website. So, you know, I just did it to try. And yes, I did get paid, but in the end, it's so much hassle for very little money in return. It becomes so saturated that the returns just go down and down and it's not really worth it. There are some different platforms that offer a little bit higher pay. If you you know give an honest review about a website or what have you, they can pay you up to 50 or 100 euros or dollars, depending on what it is. But mostly, you know, you have to click a lot of things, fill out lots of forms for a couple of years in return. So yeah, long term, I don't think there's really a sustainable source and that amount will only go down and down. So yeah, not something I'll be betting on. If you're really desperate and you just want to start making your first dollar online, give it a go, try it out, nothing to lose. But I don't think it's really something you'll be serious and building your business around in the future. Then we have translation services. And obviously that was very popular a couple of years ago. But once again, in the era of AI, I mean, these things are getting so good that honestly, I don't see the need unless you really have a specialized language that is not used by Google AI or ChatGPT, then maybe you can offer your services. But long term, once again, that's just going to drive the prices down because it becomes a commodity, right? I mean, personally, I don't remember ever having used a translator services because everything I can do online, ChatGPT is getting so crazy good. Even now I can speak to Siri and it will live translate that in another language in most languages these days so yeah i mean you can do it if it's a very specialized language but long term i think that's going to go away and lastly we have digital products now i touched on this a little bit when i talked about etsy store and drop shipping i think that's a great option right digital products are basically for example guides that you can sell online right investment guide you know some people might be willing to pay a small amount or a high amount depending on what the value offer is or it could be a net worth tracker that is very complicated very good i mean you might have seen a lot of people selling notion templates notion such a popular tool online but it can be overwhelming so people are selling their notion templates 
and you know people don't want to have to set up all their own templates on Notion. So that way they just pay them, click it, download it, and they can use Notion template from somebody else. In my case, for example, I edit these videos and I used to buy a lot of plugins for Final Cut Pro because I liked all these transitions and titles and so on flying in. Now I do less of those, but I used to spend hundreds of euros on those just to have them, right? And that's a digital download. You create it once and you can sell it in perpetuity, right? And that's the amazing part. You can sell it anytime. There's no refund. In many cases, no refund policy. You can make the money while you sleep. You'll have to actively sell it and we like digital products as opposed to selling physical products because you know things like a shirt right somebody buys it i mean i see my wife all the time she orders things she tries it I don't like the color, sends it back. You know, the size doesn't fit. And that's so much hassle to deal with. I want to have easy online business that I can sleep peacefully at night once again, not have to bother about all these different things and size and what have you. So I think digital products can be an amazing way to really make money with huge margins. But once again, you need an audience to target to, right? Now you can start off, once again, as I said before, with your own Shopify website and just run ads, but it's getting harder and harder to sell to a cold audience. We call it a cold audience that doesn't know you. You just spend money and hopefully somebody will buy it. But I think it's much easier if you have an audience. You know, if right now I'm selling you a certain you know, dividend tracker, let's say, you might be more inclined to buy from me than if tomorrow you open Instagram and you see some random guy you never followed before who hardly has a following online that tells you to buy his dividend investing course for 500 euros, right? You probably wouldn't go for it, but more likely for somebody that you've been following for a while. So I think that's a differentiating factor. So that's, once again, the beauty of building an online community. But digital products can definitely be very attractive and something I will be looking into in the future for sure. So that's 20 side hustle ideas, but I did promise you one bonus and that's to start an OnlyFans account. But sadly, my wife didn't allow me, so I might just skip that. And there you have it. These are just 20. Obviously, there's so many more out there and you can really see there's no one size fit all. It really depends on your own personal lifestyle, your preferences, what you want to do, if you want to put yourself out there. If you don't want to do that, that's totally fine as well. There's other ways to monetize. But I think most important just to get started, you know, start dabbling around, try different things. As I've shown you today, I mean, I tried many different things myself. Most of them failed in the end or I didn't enjoy it anymore. But now doing the YouTube thing is something I really love. I can see how I can monetize it in the future. I think it's only going to grow the more content I start putting out. And from there, I have different ways to monetize it. In a way, for me, it's similar to investing. There's really this compound growth. In the beginning, it's very slow. Like with my views, subscribers, it really is very slow. But long term, I start seeing exponential growth. And for that, I'm really excited. But I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments down below what is your favorite side hustle. Are you already doing any of those? Or are you looking into doing or starting some of them? Let me know. I'm really interested to hear from you. Next up, check out this video over here. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Stay healthy, get wealthy. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.